Welcome to Unit 1-7, Midpoint and Distance in the Coordinate Plane. Read over the learning goal in the scale before we start the lesson and decide where you are. We can use formulas to find the midpoint and length of any segment in the coordinate plane. On a number line, the coordinate of the midpoint is the average of the coordinates of the endpoints. So here, M, the midpoint, is A plus B divided by 2. In the coordinate plane, the coordinates of the midpoint are the average of the x-coordinates and the average of the y-coordinates of the endpoints. So we will add the x-coordinates and divide by 2, and we will add the y-coordinates and divide by 2. This will give us the x-coordinate of the midpoint. This will give us the y-coordinate of the midpoint. In example 1, we'll find the midpoint of a segment on a number line and the midpoint of a segment on a coordinate plane. In part A, segment AB has endpoints negative 4 and 9. What is the coordinate of its midpoint? To find the coordinate of the midpoint, we want to take the average of the two endpoints. So negative 4 plus 9 divided by 2. Since negative 4 plus 9 is 5, 5 divided by 2 is 2.5. So the coordinate of our midpoint is 2.5, which is about right here. For part B, segment EF has endpoints E at 7, 5 and F at 2, negative 4. What are the coordinates of its midpoint? Since we have a coordinate plane, we're going to have two coordinates, X and Y, for each endpoint. Let's find the average of both the X coordinates and the Y coordinates. Let's start with the x-coordinates. Since E has an x-coordinate of 7 and F has an x-coordinate of 2, we'll take the average of 7 and 2. 7 plus 2 is 9, divided by 2 is 4.5. Now let's look at the y-coordinates. E has a y-coordinate of 5 and F has a y-coordinate of negative 4. So let's take the average of 5 and negative 4. 5 plus negative 4 is 1, divided by 2 is 1 half, or 0.5. So the midpoint of segment EF is 4.5, 0.5. Now let's check. 4.5 on the x-coordinate is about here, and 0.5 on the y coordinate is about here. Our midpoint should be about here. Pause the video and do U try number one. For part A, segment JK has endpoints at negative 12 and 4 on a number line. So let's start by drawing that. Here are JK, the endpoints. J is at negative 12 and K is at 4. What is the coordinate of its midpoint? To find the coordinate of the midpoint, we want to take the average of the two endpoints. So negative 12 plus 4 divided by 2. Negative 12 plus 4 is negative 8 divided by 2 is negative 4. So here, 8 units from either endpoint would be our midpoint at negative 4. For part B, we are looking for the midpoint of segment RS with endpoints at R, 5, negative 10, and S, 3, 6. Let's start by looking at the X coordinates, negative 5 and 3. So let's find the average, sorry, 5 and 3. So let's find the average of 5 and 3. So 5 plus 3 divided by 2 is 8 divided by 2 or 4. So the midpoint of the x coordinates is 4. Now let's take a look at the y coordinates, negative 10 and 6. So let's find the average of the y coordinates, negative 10 plus 6 divided by 2. Negative 10 plus 6 is negative 4 divided by 2 is negative 2. So the y coordinate of the midpoint is negative 2. Our midpoint has coordinates of 4, negative 2. 
In example two, they tell us the midpoint of segment CD is point M at coordinate negative two, one. One end point is C at coordinate negative five, seven. We want to find the coordinates of the other end point D. Let's start by letting M at negative two, one equal XY. And let's let C negative five, seven represent X1, Y1. Now let's write out the midpoint formula. Now let's solve for x1 and y1 in both equations. Let's start by multiplying both sides by 2. Negative 2 times 2 is negative 4. And on the right hand side, 2 times 2 gives me 1, so I'm left with 5, negative 5 plus x. If we add 5 to both sides, then x will equal 1. To find y1, again, let's start by multiplying both sides by 2. 2 times 1 is 2, and that will equal 7 plus y1. If I subtract 7 from both sides, then negative 5 will equal y1. So the ordered pair for endpoint D will be 1, negative 5. And again, let's check. If we move along, let's do 1 on the coordinate plane on the x-axis and down 5, this would be our endpoint D. Pause the video and do you try number 2. Okay. We know the midpoint of segment AB has the coordinates of 4, negative 9. We know endpoint A has coordinates negative 3, negative 5. We want to find the coordinates of point B. Let's let 4 and negative 9 represent X and Y. Let's let negative 3 and negative 5 represent X1 and Y1. We now need to find X2 and Y2 in the midpoint formula. After writing our equations, let's multiply both sides of the first equation by 2. 4 times 2 is 8. Those cancel. They give us 1. So I'm left with negative 3 plus x1 on the right. Add 3 to both sides, and 11 will equal x1. Let's do the same thing for the y-coordinate. Start by multiplying both sides by 2 to get rid of the denominator. Negative 9 times 2 is negative 18. On the right-hand side, our 2's divide out to be 1 and leave me with negative 5 plus y1. If I add 5 to both sides, I am left with negative 13 equals y1. So, the ordered pair for the endpoint B will be 11, negative 13. We've already learned how to find the distance between two points on a number line. To find the distance between two points on a coordinate plane, we can use the distance formula. The distance formula says that the distance will equal the square root of the difference of the two x coordinates squared plus the difference between the two y-coordinates squared. The distance formula is based on the Pythagorean theorem, which we're going to study later. When we use the distance formula, we are really finding the length of the hypotenuse of a right triangle. Example 3 asks, what is the distance between point u at negative 7, 5 and point v at 4, negative 3? Let's round our answer to the nearest tenth. Let's start by writing the distance formula. Remember, the more times we write it, the less likely we are to forget it. Now, let's identify x1 and y1 and x2 and y2. Now, let's substitute these values into our distance formula. Now, let's simplify this. 4 minus negative 7 is 11. We'll square that. Plus, negative 3 minus 5 is negative 8. We'll square that, and last we'll take the square root. 11 squared is 121 plus negative 8 squared, which is 64. Now we're going to add these two together. 
121 plus 64 will be 185. The square root of 185 is approximately 13.601. Since they asked us to round to the nearest tenth, we will round this to 13.6. Pause the video and do you try number three. In part A, segment SR has endpoints S at negative 214 and R at 3, negative 1. What is the length of segment SR to the nearest tenth? Let's start by writing the distance formula. Now, let's identify x1, y1 and x2, y2. Next, we'll substitute these values into the distance formula. Now, let's simplify to find the value of D. Rounded to the nearest tenth, the length of segment SR is 15.8. For part B, they want to know if in problem 3, we let V be 4, negative 3 for x1, y1, and U, negative 7, 5, be x2, y2. Would we still get the same result? Well, let's plug these values in to our formula and see. Even though the difference of our coordinates are the opposite, this is negative 11 instead of 11 like it was before, and this is 8 instead of negative 8 like it was before. When we square those, our values are the same. So yes, even though we switched the order of our coordinates, we still get the same distance. Example 4 says, on a zipline course, you are harnessed at a cable that travels through the treetops. You start at platform A and zip to each of the other platforms. How far do you travel from platform B to platform C? Each grid unit represents 5 meters. Let's start by identifying the coordinate of point B and point C. Now let's write our distance formula. Identify your x1, y1 and your x2, y2. Now let's substitute these coordinates into our distance formula. Now simplify your radical. Now remember, each grid unit represents 5 meters, so we want to take our distance of approximately 36 and multiply that by 5. We will get 180 meters approximately. Pause the video and do you try number 4. Okay, let's see how far we will travel from platform D down to platform E. Write the distance formula and identify the coordinates for point E and point D. Identify your x1, y1, and x2, y2. Now substitute into the distance formula and simplify. Remember that each grid is 5 meters, so we want to take our answer and multiply it by 5. That will give us approximately 102 meters. Sorry, 182 meters. Now is your chance to shine. Let's see how well you learned what was taught in the video. Hit pause and complete the lesson check now. Make sure you check your answers. If you have any questions, ask me tomorrow in class. If you feel like you really understood the lesson, please try the challenge. Now that we're done, take another look at the learning goal. Reread the scale and see if you've progressed any higher since the beginning.